what's really interesting about these guys is that we're testing an idea that we've had about why mice and why we get old. And that's been a question for thousands of years. Why do we age? Bottoms up. Meryl Streep downed a shot of an anti-aging elixir and death becomes her. But what was once Hollywood magic may be closer to reality than you might think. I'm a girl. There's a misconception that what we're trying to do here is keep people older for longer. It's actually the complete opposite. We're trying to keep people younger for longer. It's the science of aging and Harvard Medical School researcher David Sinclair is smack in the middle of it. In this exclusive look at his strictly guarded mice lab, Sinclair describes how he's attempting to turn back the clock. One of the mice here looks quite old. He has some gray hair, he's getting wrinkles, he's losing some hair on his nose. And this mouse is, for all intents and purposes, old. Um, and then these other mice here are relatively young looking. It turns out they're exactly the same age. They're brothers and sisters. And what we've done is we've set up the system here so that uh, this mouse is undergoing aging but a little bit faster than normal. And we can now use him to test the molecules to slow down aging. Sinclair has been studying the aging process for nearly 20 years now. A decade ago, he spearheaded research on resveratrol, a molecule found in grapes that made headlines when scientists revealed it kept overfed mice fit and healthy. Suddenly, red wine was all the rage. Since then, we've been trying to not just understand resveratrol, but how do we make better molecules that could be drugs one day. And when we want to grow up a lot of these cells to make it, uh, we put them in here, and this is called a bioreactor, and this is filled with billions of yeast cells that are producing molecules that we will uh, feed to mice uh, and eventually, hopefully one day, uh, put it in a pill or a cream to be able to have people uh, live longer and healthier lives. NAD is a really interesting molecule. It's the latest in our long line of research. If you raise the NAD levels, at least in a mouse that has liver cancer, uh, we can greatly extend the lifespan uh, and the prognosis for that mouse. So we're optimistic that this technology could uh, also benefit uh, people with cancer as well. Each one of these human cells that's growing here, what's really interesting and important for aging are the red dots here. Those are called the mitochondria. Each of our cells needs mitochondria or basically they die within a few seconds. So you really need these mitochondria to make energy. And as we get older, the amount of energy that these little uh, capsules make, these battery packs, goes down a lot. And our molecules, we discovered just last year, can rapidly reverse the aging in these red mitochondria so that they become youthful. One of the most important things that we've been looking at is the ability of our research to protect the brain because there's no use in keeping the rest of the body healthy but having the brain deteriorate. So what we've been doing is looking at whether these anti-aging genes or these youth prolonging genes, sirtuins, do they protect the brain? And the answer is absolutely yes. If you have a mouse that has more of the sirtuin genes, they're protected against Alzheimer's, Huntington's, and they're even smarter. Despite skepticism in some scientific circles, Sinclair is an ardent defender of the work his team is doing. Every time we put out a paper, seemingly, there's someone who comes back and says, ah, this is not right. Uh, but we haven't had to change our conclusions yet. Time and time, we've gone back and we've checked our work, we've repeated it, we've gone further, we've gone deeper. He's so confident, he's actually made himself a human guinea pig. It's fairly well known that I've been taking resveratrol uh, for the last 10 years, and I'm still alive. I still feel great. Uh, my parents decided to take it 10 years ago too, and they're still doing well in their 70s. My father is 75 and literally fitter than I am. He still runs and goes to the gym every day. Uh, so we'll see. And it's possible the work being done at Sinclair's lab may not only extend life, it could help create it. There's even newer technology where you could take some cells from a woman who is becoming infertile or 
is going to have chemotherapy and we could grow those in the lab and we could select the healthiest ones and correct genetic diseases and make children out of those. It could be years, even decades, before the benefit of Sinclair's work is proven in humans. But he's virtually certain that time will come. I wouldn't even set a limit to the human lifespan. Uh, I'm not crazy enough to say that we're going to live forever. That's not going to happen. Um, but can we live to 100? For sure. Can we one day all live to 150? I don't see why not. It's just a matter of when.